Hi family, it's Ari, and today I wanted to share with you my favorite passage of scripture, Psalm 107. Um, it's really ministered to me in the past five years, and it's been on my heart lately to share, so I just wanted to go through that today. Um, but today, uh, would you just uh, pray with me as we, as we open up? Father, we just uh, thank you, Lord for hearing our prayers, Lord, for meeting with us in this time, Lord, as we just, uh, we come before your word, Lord. Uh, would you prepare our hearts, Lord, to hear from your word? Lord, quiet our busy hearts and, um, Lord, fill us with your, uh, your word, Lord, your knowledge, your goodness. Uh, we ask these things in, in your name, in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so Psalm 107, like I said, it's my favorite, um, favorite Psalm, favorite passage of scripture, but it is a bit long. So I'll just do part one today. Uh, it's a Psalm of praise, but within that praise, um, the, the author calls the believer to remember all of the incredible ways that God has delivered and redeemed his people. It goes through saving those in four different um, walks of life, four different struggles. And uh, so we'll just do part one today. Uh, beginning in verse one, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And that's us, church family. I know that he has redeemed my soul from death and from my, my ways, from destruction. And those who he has redeemed, um, it, we've been called to give thanks because he is good. And Philippians 4.4 4 tells believers to rejoice in the Lord always. I mean, we're going through fiery trials and through deep waters, but even in that, in that mourning and that pain and that sorrow, we're still called to rejoice in the Lord. And that is the beautiful sort of contrast of, of the Holy Spirit in us, right? We can mourn and we can give thanks at the same time. And it's only, you know, through the Lord. Um, now there's a common phrase that some people use and it's can't complain. And it's never been my favorite, to be honest. And I don't want to put anybody down who uses that phrase. But it just kind of sounds like, you know, I could be complaining, but I, you know, haven't found anything to complain about yet. Or, you know, or I could be complaining, but I'm choosing not to. And that's that's good, right? That's the, the right intention. But it it's very different from, you know, rejoicing in the merciful redemption of the Lord, right? And so do we want to be can't complain Christians or say so Christians, you know, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Um, and why? Be because he is good always and his loving kindness is everlasting. And in some translations, it says the mercy, his mercy endures forever. And, you know, nothing in this world lasts, nothing in creation will last, but his mercy will endure forever. Now, the, the first uh, way of life that this psalm goes through is the lost wanderer needing a guide. Um, in verses 4 through 9, it says, They wandered in the wilderness in a desert region. They did not find a way to an inhabited city. They were hungry and thirsty, and their soul fainted within them. Then they cried out to the Lord, and in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. He led them also by a straight way to an inhabited city. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for his wonders to the sons of men, for he has satisfied the thirsty soul and the hungry soul he has filled with what is good. Now, these are the hungry and thirsty wanderers, and that's us, right? Before we know Christ, that's us, right? We're, we're seeking, we're wandering. Uh, it reminds me of Psalm 42, as the deer pants for water, so my soul thirsts for you. And that's us before we come to the Lord, and that's us when we're in the Lord, but we're not, you know, um, we're not 
feeding on his word, were, um, were thirsty for him. Now, Charles Spurgeon had something to say about this psalm. He said, The spirits sink when the body, bodily frame becomes exhausted by long pervasions. Who can keep up his courage when he is ready to fall to the ground at every step through utter exhaustion? The supply of food is all eaten, the water is spent in the bottles, and there are neither fields nor streams in the desert. The heart therefore sinks in dire despair. Such is the condition of an awakened conscience before it knows the Lord Jesus. It is full of unsatisfied cravings, painful needs, and heavy fears. It is utterly spent and without strength, and there is nothing in the whole creation which can minister to its refreshment. And just how deeply do we need Christ? I mean, without him, we will search and we will wander and we will thirst. Now, the second way of life is the prisoner. Uh, this is verses 11 through 16. It says, those who dwelt, there were those who dwelt in darkness and in the shadow of death, prisoners in misery and chains, because they had rebelled against the words of God, and they spurned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he humbled their hearts with labor. They stumbled, and there was none to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and of the shadow of death, and he broke their chains in pieces. Let them give thanks for the Lord, for his loving kindness, and for his wonders to the sons of men. For he shattered the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron asunder. And I love that word asunder. It's so strong, right? It's just, I mean, the Lord is so mighty to to break those chains of bondage to sin, right? I mean, there's, that's us, right? Again, that's us before we, we are freed from our sin. And uh, I mean, there are many people that I'm close with or that I'm praying for right now that, that fit into this picture, right? I mean, we, we've been delivered from this and this is our heart for others to be delivered, right? It, it makes me think of the drugs, alcohol, pride, greed, depression, anxiety, fear, anger. And yeah, do you love someone? Are you praying for someone who's in bondage to these in this, um, as it says, misery and chains? Um, maybe they're deeply tangled in believing the lies of the enemy. Or they feel so powerless to escape this physical or mental slavery to sin. And, you know, while everyone's heart may look different, our Lord knows the inner working of every individual. And he has the power to break the chains and deliver from darkness and from the shadow of death. And, you know, we're in a very real battle and he's given us every resource that we need. So... Um, I just want to encourage you to pray for those that, um, that we love that are struggling in this captivity or maybe yourself if you're struggling in that captivity and you just feel in, in chains. You know, our good Father um, frees the captive. Um, and this psalm, just to close, this psalm focuses on the goodness of God. And recently I was talking to a, a really dear brother and sister in Christ about those who struggle in believing um, in the goodness of God. Um, now we can study apologetics and, you know, defend our faith in theology. And that is important to have that knowledge uh, and to understand that because um, God is uh, desires genuine love from his creation, he gave us the free will to choose. And there's so much that goes along with that. Um, but the knowledge must be paired with an active worship of the heart. Um, we can know that God is good, but we are also called um, as the redeemed to give thanks um, and rejoice in his goodness. And I believe it, it not only encourages others um, to grow in their faith, but it also stokes our own faith and, and grows our own. Um, and so he is good. Amen. Um, so would you just pray with me to close? And as we pray, uh, would you lift up those who need 
uh, that deliverance from these areas of life, from that wandering and from that captivity. Um, so, Father, we just uh, lift up those, Lord, who are, who are wandering, Lord. They're searching, they're thirsty, their soul faints within them. We lift up those in complete misery and chains, Lord. Um, captives um, because of rebellion, Lord, because of that, um, that despair, Lord. We lift them up to you, Lord. I know that all of us have people that come to mind, Lord. We lift them up to you and pray that your will would be done, Lord, that they would come to know your deliverance, Lord, that they would cry out to you and, Lord, taste and see that you are good. Uh, we give you thanks that this is who you are, that we can trust in you, Lord. Um, and we, we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who saved our souls. Amen. Well, church family, I love you, and I will see you soon. God bless you.